First of all, guys, how are you? We're great, thanks. Yes, very well. Okay. Um, well, before we talk about the, the latest record, I'd like to go back quickly. Your, your quick thoughts on uh, An Awesome Wave after having finished uh, this one. It's very um, intense. Yeah, it's an intense album. I think, it's, um, I think it sounds quite juvenile in some ways, listening to it now, not in a bad way, but it sounds like it was made by young people you know, who were still figuring out what sound they wanted to make. But I think, you know, it's, it's, um, in that way, I think it's really good. It's very poppy. I kind of think it's very, uh, it's, it's very mainstream. Do you think so? <laughs> yeah, when I think about it, it's the, the, I mean, the reason that like Blues, Blues Box is so mm. successful, for example, is because it, it, it pleases a lot of people. And it's just very, it's very, in my opinion, very simple um, pop but music. That, the outset, that wasn't, necessarily the aim for you no no right. but i think we were yeah we were just younger you know and we, now with the second album we came back and we were more like feeling like trying newer things i think so um the previous record felt a lot younger y you were obviously mm. a, lot, a lot younger so in the past two years what, what do you think has been the biggest learning moment or learning experience um, I don't, can you think of anything? Um, I think we've maybe learned to uh, trust our instinct and not compromise. Um, it could, we could have gone down many different paths with the band. Um, luckily, we've always managed to keep our uh, kind of artistic integrity, which is very, very important. And um, I hope we continue doing that. Um, and I think we've learned that we certain things we like to do, certain things we don't like to do in terms of like the bit, the big, the grand scheme of things, the industry, things like that. Mm. So um, I think we've matured a lot. We're a bit more focused on what we want. And was this something you worried about when uh, the first record was such a success, and then the, the, there's this this myth or something about about the second record? So was there a worry that that there might be too much pressure? Um, I don't think we were too worried about the pressure of, you know, making a, a follow-up album to a successful album. You know, I think um, we knew that, like Tom said, you know, we'd learned by then that we knew best. I think that we, you know, the only people we need to mm -hmm. listen to are each other and ourselves. And so, you know, in that respect, I think we knew we, we knew that if we made a second album, released it, it would be good. So I think we, we, you know, we by having high standards, you ensure that your output is always good. I think. Mm -hmm. And then, well, before you uh, or. Let me put it this way. How much of the, the album had been written when uh, Gwil left? Um, little enough that I think it's fair to say that Gwil didn't co-write this album. You know, I think he, there are a couple of songs that he'd done a little couple of bits for, mm -hmm. but you know, he said, look, I'm leaving the band. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, the, the very small amount I've contributed. Well, yeah, you know, no, I think it was pretty much written after Will left, mostly. I mean, there were, there were, there were old ideas, but, right. the, but they were mostly finished. They were all finished you know, after Will left. W was it a shock that he left? Um, yeah. yeah, it yeah. was. It, when, he, when, he, uh, when he told us, I didn't see it coming. Okay. Um, but it was nonetheless yeah. understandable. We were like, yeah, I guess I can see why you're leaving. Mm. And, and what, when he told you, what was... The mentality, like in the band, well, wh where was the band at that point? Phys ge geographically? No, 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 more, more in, a, oh. in a existential sense. Um, I think we were like, I think it was almost, it was, it was surprise and shock, but also I think a certain sense of, well, we're not leaving the band. You know, I remember, you know, we, we all met up and Gwil was like, told us he was leaving and mm. we chatted a bit and then there was sort of nothing else to say really. So Gwil sort of left, like, you know, went home, and we're like, and we, then the three of us went and had lunch, and we sort of were like, I think that was that was the moment, you know, that we, that it was kind of like, we discussed it, and we were like, well, you know, we're going to carry on, we're going to just have to make the third album, sorry, the second album without him, mm -hmm. and so I think we were pretty optimistic actually, okay. you know, we were pretty, I think we were pretty so optimistic. So kind of reinforce your own conviction that this is what you wanted to do. Exactly. I think that by not, I think by the, by staying in the band, we reaffirmed our our commitment to it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, so what was the first uh, song then after that moment that, that you started writing? Nara, wasn't it? I think it was Nara, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Nara, that was that was a big boost for for Amoral, I think. You know, the fact that Gwil left, and then you know, we a few days later we got we came together to start the sessions with this album. We first song we worked on was Nara, and we were like, I think well, we, we, that song came together pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and we were like, okay, cool, we can do it. We can, st we've still got it. You know, right. we've still got it as a three piece. And uh, well, the, the, this uh, I, I looked it up. Nara is a place in uh, Japan. Mm. What sparked this interest in, in the city? Something that Joe read on Reddit. Yeah, Joe read an article on uh, Reddit. Reddit. dot com. Oh, so you've never never visited? Never been. No, no, no. I think it just. Um, yeah, he read about the fact that the deer are kind of like sacred, or um, you, know, you can't disturb them or anything like that. And it was just an interesting kind of thing, and he took it and used it as kind of a metaphor for different things um, within the, you know, the lyrics of the track, yeah. Well, when it comes to you with these lyrics, do you then discuss what those, those meanings are, what those metaphors are? I will sometimes, but yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't have any input with the lyrics. But to me, it, to me it, it's um, the music is the music. And then the Joe has his his, his story to storytelling right. on top of the music. So I, there's no need to um, have any input. So generally, then uh, would you say because I assume it's different for each song, but would you start with the music then? I think if I had to say one, it would be the music, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music majority majority majoritarily is that a word? Um, <laughs> you, normally, um. <laughs> in in the main. Yeah, um, because I think you know there are certain songs where the lyrics are not actually very um, important, mm -hmm. but there's not a single song where the music isn't important. Mm -hmm. So there has this. Um, well, the, the, I assume then that uh, Joe writes the most of the lyrics. Yeah, he writes the lyrics. Yeah. So has this been the case then for you from from the very beginning that that the music was uh, key and then then the lyrics would be kind of Joe's thing. It Clearly, we're you know we're only involved in the music. Yeah, I'm, I'm only in it for the music. Yeah, um, I, I I like the lyrics, mm -hmm. but I'm a musician, sure. um, and um, yeah, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. I mean.